The world around us is changing at an alarming rate, with every headline and every news report revealing shifts that would have seemed unimaginable just a few years ago. From the rapid decline of cash in everyday life to record high levels of household and national debt, these trends are not only reshaping our economy, but also point toward deeper spiritual questions. As we dive into this message, I want us to look at what these changes really mean, not just for our day-to-day -day lives, but for our faith. There's a shift happening in how people buy, sell, and live that goes beyond economics. It feels like the world is building towards something bigger, something that believers need to be alert to. Dave Ramsey recently appeared on a podcast discussing how the world is steadily moving toward a cashless society. His conversation touched on themes that closely align with the economic control described in Revelation 13, sparking reflection on the prophetic implications of a cashless world. A big picture, there's a weird incentive here because there are the forces of totalitarianism want to get rid of cash, of course, mm -hmm. because it cash cannot be controlled in the way that digital currency can be controlled. Right. All of our cash comes through the banks. Mm -hmm. The government gets us cash through banks. Mm -hmm. But banks have a massive incentive to get rid of cash also because they're profiting from credit cards. Very And very labor intensive to screw with the cash. Well, exactly. Uh, and dirty, by the way. Yeah. Um, so banks have, once again, every incentive to eliminate the use of cash in the United States. In this first clip, Tucker Carlson touches on a topic that is becoming increasingly relevant in both secular and Christian circles. Carlson states, the forces of totalitarianism want to get rid of cash, of course, because cash cannot be controlled in the way that digital currency can be controlled. His words highlight a rising awareness that the world is trending toward a cashless society where physical money could become obsolete. Remarkably, people from all walks of life, believers and non-believers alike, are recognizing this shift and its implications for personal freedom and privacy. While the Bible doesn't explicitly state that the last days or the rule of the Antichrist will involve a cashless society, it does foretell a period marked by unprecedented economic control as described in Revelation. Consider Revelation 13 verses 16 to 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. While this passage doesn't directly reference a cashless society, it vividly portrays a system of economic control where only those who bear a particular mark are able to participate in the economy. The move toward digital currency, in many ways, makes this kind of control possible on a global scale. And so, it's understandable that even people who don't consider themselves religious are growing uneasy, realizing the trajectory of this world seems to align with what scripture describes. Let's delve into what Carlson refers to as the forces of totalitarianism that seek to eliminate cash. It's worth considering whether these forces are purely human or if there could be a spiritual dimension involved. In the Bible, we're taught that the enemy, Satan, is the god of this world. We see this in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, and one of his chief aims is control, control over lives, thoughts, and eventually, actions. Moving away from cash and relying solely on digital means of exchange would make it far easier to control what people can buy, where they can go, and ultimately, how they live. This type of system can potentially be weaponized to favor those who align with specific ideologies while suppressing those who stand against them, or more specifically, those who receive a mark and those who do not, or even more specifically, those who worship the first beast or those who do not. In practical terms, a cashless society means every transaction is recorded, leaving little to no room for privacy. Today, cash transactions are often made privately and anonymously. They don't leave a trace that can be easily monitored or tracked. But in a cashless world, every transaction becomes a digital footprint. This digital footprint could, theoretically, be tracked, controlled, or even restricted. By removing cash from the system, an infrastructure begins to form that aligns eerily well with the description in Revelation. In such a world, the ability to monitor everyone's spending habits, purchasing choices, and financial priorities would be significantly heightened. Those in power could selectively block or allow transactions 
based on compliance with certain standards or beliefs. The Bible warns that a time is coming when the forces of evil will seek control over every aspect of our lives, especially economically. Revelation 13 gives us a glimpse into a future where no one can buy or sell without a particular mark. If the currency is fully digital, such control would indeed be feasible. With no cash alternatives, every transaction would pass through a central authority capable of deciding who can and who cannot participate in the economy. This level of influence over our day-to-day -day lives could potentially allow those forces of totalitarianism to create a world where dissent becomes economically challenging or even impossible. In this context, the elimination of cash could very well be seen as a step toward making the fulfillment of Revelation 13 verses 16 and 17 achievable. If believers and non-believers alike are starting to see this, it's likely because the world's direction mirrors the prophetic warnings given to us in the book of Revelation. Later in the interview, Dave Ramsey discusses how large corporations are gathering people's data and how using cash can help keep individuals somewhat off the grid. He explains that with this data, companies can track almost every detail about specific households or families. Like data and they use the data to sell us more. And I mean, Google's doing that. We know that. We know Apple's doing that. That's not, it's not rocket surgery. We know this is going on. But so cash gets you off the grid. Cash represents freedom. So it is antithesis for totalitarianism. The, do, the ability do people to, use cash? I feel like people don't use cash anymore. Not, not as much. Not as much. It's way down. In this clip, Tucker and Dave bring attention to the steady drop in cash usage among American households, which reflects a growing shift toward a cashless society. According to the Federal Reserve's Diary of Consumer Payment Choice, cash use fell significantly from 26% of all transactions in 2019 to only 19% by 2021. This decline aligns with trends accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic as health concerns and changes in retail operations have pushed people toward contactless and digital payment options. Furthermore, a recent study by Pew Research shows that approximately 41% of Americans report not using any cash in a typical week, a notable increase from just 24% in 2015. Higher income households in particular lead this trend. 59% of those earning over $100,000 per year report making all their purchases without cash, a significant rise from 43% in 2018. According to Pew Research, this pattern is partly due to the increasing availability and convenience of digital payment options, such as mobile wallets and contactless cards. The decreasing reliance on cash raises questions about privacy and control, especially as the infrastructure for cashless transactions becomes more pervasive. According to the Federal Reserve, the shift toward cashless payments not only reflects consumer preferences, but also retailer policies encouraging card or digital payments, limiting cash as an option. Cash transactions offer a level of privacy that digital payments do not, as cash exchanges do not leave digital records that can be easily tracked or monitored. In a world without cash, however, every purchase would create a data trail, contributing to a centralized system that could exert significant control over individual choices. For Christians, this shift has prophetic implications. A cashless society aligns with the economic control described in Revelation 13, verses 16 and 17, which speaks of a time when one cannot buy or sell without a specific mark. As we move further into this era of digital-only transactions, such control becomes increasingly feasible. This so how much um, debt is the average American carrying on credit cards? 37,000. 37, 000. 37 like per? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the cur current averages. I mean, depending have, on who you read and who you believe. I have, we haven't done the, that research at Ramsey, but we've, we've looked it up. I mean, $37,000? Yes. At what interest rate? I love 18 to 28 is the range on, on cars. Well, that's just crazy town. Yeah, yeah. And if you had thirty-seven thousand dollars in credit card debt, wouldn't you be scared? Uh, they are, and so when the cost of bread goes up and supply chain screws with their. In this clip, Tucker and Dave shift the focus to the growing consumer debt burden in the U.S., emphasizing the significant rise in both personal and national debt. As of the second quarter of 2024, total household debt in the United States has reached a staggering seventeen point eight trillion dollars reflecting a steady increase influenced by inflation and reliance on credit to manage rising living costs. 
According to the Federal Reserve's quarterly report on household debt and credit, this debt includes mortgages, auto loans, student loans, and credit card debt. Notably, credit card debt alone has surpassed $1.14 trillion for the first time, signaling an increased dependency on revolving credit for everyday expenses, from groceries to larger purchases. Furthermore, the report illustrates how credit usage has surged across various income levels, with higher income households often leading this trend. On a broader scale, the national debt raises even more concern. As of October 24, 2024, the U.S. national debt has reached an unprecedented $35.81 trillion, a figure that represents long-term fiscal challenges for the country. As people observe these unsettling trends, they are not just passively watching, but actively sensing that these are the last days unfolding before their eyes. The sense of an imminent, significant event is almost palpable. It's a continuous, nagging intuition that something far bigger than just an economic downturn or social unrest is on the horizon. This intuition is real and constant, driven by both observable events and an internal awareness that history is on the cusp of a dramatic change. The anticipated change is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, a fervent hope that resides deeply in the hearts of true believers today. Born-again Christians around the world find themselves in complete agreement with John as he concluded the penultimate verse of the Bible, passionately declaring, Even so, come, Lord Jesus. This heartfelt cry resonates from the depths of their souls, yearning for the return of their Savior. He is the precious Jesus, the one who selflessly gave his life for humanity. The thought of heaven, with its indescribable beauty and eternal peace, fills their hearts with an overwhelming longing. This heavenly promise is what their spirits crave above all else. As they observe the unfolding events in the world, Christians are driven to their knees in prayer, echoing John's earnest plea, Even so, come, Lord Jesus. This prayer is not just a repetition of words, but a profound expression of faith and hope. This collective anticipation unites believers, creating a powerful sense of community and shared purpose. Their unwavering faith in Jesus Christ sustains them, providing strength and courage to face the challenges of life. As they await his glorious return, their hearts are filled with hope knowing that the fulfillment of this divine promise will bring unimaginable blessings and eternal peace. So, with every fiber of their being, they continue to pray and believe, even so, come, Lord Jesus. It is crucial for us to realize that we are not merely living through ordinary times. We are witnessing the very unfolding of events that Scripture warned us about thousands of years ago. While many people around the world are distracted by their daily lives, oblivious to the shifts happening in front of their eyes, we as followers of Christ must be awake. We are called to discern the times and recognize the spiritual forces at work. The Bible speaks clearly about the end times, and we are rapidly moving toward that period. Yet shockingly, the world is sleepwalking into the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation where a global system of control will be established under the rule of the Antichrist. The world is sleepwalking into Revelation 13. The world is literally and willfully marching into the very hands of the Antichrist. The world is sleepwalking into a time where you cannot buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. The world is sleepwalking into a time where one man will be worshipped. The world is sleepwalking toward a dangerous and deceptive future, unaware of the spiritual forces at work behind the scenes. Yet the Bible warns us of a coming time where the freedom to live, trade, and worship will be dictated by one man, the Antichrist. Blind to these warnings, the world continues to drift toward this inevitable reality, unprepared for what lies ahead. If you observe the trends of our world today, you will notice a steady and increasing march toward global governance, economic centralization, and technological control. These developments are not coincidences. They are part of a larger narrative that is bringing the world closer to the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Globalization is not just an economic or political process. 
It is paving the way for the final empire that the Antichrist will rule. Revelation 13 describes this period in terrifying detail, a time when no one will be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast. This is not some distant future event. It is happening right now, right under our noses, and many are blind to it. The world is not only interconnected economically, but also through technological advances that link every aspect of our lives. We are living in a time where our phones, our homes, our cars, even our appliances are all connected. This year alone, we witnessed a global IT outage caused by CrowdStrike, a cybersecurity company that sent shockwaves across the globe. Businesses were disrupted, governments scrambled to respond, and ordinary people felt the ripple effects of a single failure. This is the world we live in now, a world so connected that one event can impact the entire planet. Does this not sound like the kind of system the Antichrist will control? A world where everything is tied together, monitored, and managed by a centralized authority. The Bible tells us that this future leader, the Antichrist, will have unprecedented power. In Revelation 13, 4, we read, And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? This man will not just be a political leader. He will be a global ruler with authority over all nations. He will be worshipped by the entire world, and his control will extend to every aspect of life, economic, political, and spiritual. As Christians, we must not underestimate the power that the Antichrist will wield. Too often, we imagine that his reign will be something obvious, something that will be easy to spot and resist. But the reality is far more subtle and dangerous. We are already witnessing the rise of global organizations such as the World Economic Forum, the European Union, and the United Nations, all of which are pushing for centralized control. Could it be that we are seeing the groundwork being laid for the infrastructure of the Antichrist system? The Bible is clear about the power that he will have. Revelation 13.7 tells us that he will be given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. This is not just a local or regional government. This is global dominion. Take, for example, the World Economic Forum, a prominent supporter and promoter of policies that advocate for centralized control in various sectors. The forum, led by its founder Klaus Schwab, hosts annual meetings that bring together global leaders, CEOs, policymakers, and experts to discuss global challenges. The World Economic Forum promotes initiatives aimed at creating global frameworks for governance, focusing on wide-ranging areas such as economics, technology, and environmental policy. One of the World Economic Forum's key areas of advocacy is the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which emphasizes the integration of digital technologies into economies and societies. This includes advancements in AI, big data, and digital identities. For instance, we are already seeing countries like Australia adopt digital IDs. As you may ask the question, what exactly is a digital ID? In simple terms, a digital identity is an electronic version of a person's identity, often stored in a centralized system. It can include biometric data such as fingerprints, facial recognition, iris scans, along with a digital record of an individual's activities, financial transactions, and social interactions. Once fully implemented, a digital ID could be used to verify a person's identity in nearly every aspect of life, from banking and healthcare to voting and traveling. Digital identity is already being embraced by many countries around the world. Australia, for example, plans to implement a comprehensive digital identity program by the end of 2024. This system, known as the Trust Exchange, TX, will enable digital identity verification across a host of services and transactions, making it difficult for anyone to function in society without being part of the system. Other nations, such as India, have also implemented national digital ID systems. India's Aadhaar system is the largest biometric ID system in the world, and it assigns a unique 12-digit identification number to each citizen based on their biometric and demographic data. 
With Aadhaar, individuals can access government services, open bank accounts, and even make purchases, all tied to their digital identity. The global push for digital ID is being driven by influential world leaders and global entities. As more nations implement digital identification systems, the potential for governments or institutions to use these tools for mass surveillance grows. Digital IDs make it easier to track every aspect of individuals' lives, their activities, movements, purchases, and interactions. Imagine a future where your every action is recorded and analyzed, from where you travel to what you buy. Digital IDs could facilitate a system where all this data is centrally stored and accessed leading to concerns about potential misuse. This might even pave the way for a social credit system where control over essential aspects of life is tied to digital credentials, similar to what some fear may happen with the mark of the beast, where those without it cannot buy or sell. The world is rapidly changing. It's shifting in ways we've never seen before. Look at the society you live in. There are powerful men and women who seek godlike control over others. This drive for dominance isn't new, but it is intensifying. We are living in a time where there are people who want to know every detail of your life, from where you go to what you do to what you buy. This is a lust for godlike control over people's lives. However, these individuals fail to realize that there is only one God, the Almighty, and He alone will judge them for their actions. The mark of the beast is coming. The Antichrist is coming. The global leader is coming. And what will this global leader do with such power? He will demand worship. Revelation 13.8 warns us that all who dwell on the earth will worship him, everyone whose name has not been written in the book of life. This is not just political allegiance. This is spiritual submission. Those who refuse to worship the Antichrist will be persecuted, and those who take his mark will face eternal punishment from God. The Bible calls this man the lawless one, in 2 Thessalonians 2.8. He is also referred to as the beast, and he will usher in a period of unparalleled deception and control. But what's terrifying is that the world is willingly walking into his hands. The world is sleepwalking into the events described in Revelation chapter 13. Systems of control are already being established and people are embracing them without understanding the dangers they face. It is not normal for every aspect of your life to be monitored. Yet we are living in a world that is gradually becoming more and more accustomed to this constant surveillance. We are living in a world that is more connected than ever before. Technology, which promises convenience and progress, is quickly becoming a tool of surveillance and control. Look at the rise of smart devices. Our phones, homes and cars are all connected to the Internet. Every action we take is being tracked, recorded and analyzed. Companies and governments have access to more data about us than ever before in human history. We are voluntarily handing over control of our lives, thinking it is making things easier, but in reality, it is creating the infrastructure for total control. Take for example the new Ray-Ban smart glasses developed by Meta, formerly Facebook. These glasses are designed to seamlessly integrate with social media, allowing users to record and share their surroundings in real time. While this may seem like an exciting advancement, it also raises serious concerns about privacy and surveillance. How long will it be before devices like these are used not just for entertainment, but for monitoring and controlling people's behavior? We are also seeing the rise of microchip interfaces, technology that allows humans to control devices with their thoughts. While this technology is still in its early stages, human trials are already underway and it is only a matter of time before it becomes mainstream. Imagine a world where people have microchips implanted in their brains, and those chips are used to monitor their every thought and action. The Bible warns us that the Antichrist will force all people to receive a mark on their right hand or forehead, and without it, they will not be able to buy or sell. This is not some far-fetched idea. It is a reality that we are quickly moving toward. Even self-driving cars, which are being hailed as the future of transportation, are part of this system of control. Projections suggest that by 2050, fully autonomous vehicles could make up 50 to 60% of all vehicles on the road. 
This means that the infrastructure for controlling transportation is being built right now. Imagine a world where the Antichrist has the power to control who can travel, where they can go, and when they can leave their homes. This is not science fiction. It is a glimpse into the future that the Bible describes. More than ever, we are seeing a push for centralized control. Governments and corporations are working together to build a system where everything is connected and monitored. Digital currencies are on the rise and with them comes the ability to control financial transactions on a global scale. Biometric identification is becoming more common. All of this is leading to the kind of world that the Bible describes, a world where the Antichrist will have total control over every aspect of life. The Bible tells us that this final empire will not just be political, it will be a spiritual empire as well. Revelation 13.8 says that all who dwell on the earth will worship him. This means that the Antichrist will demand not only allegiance but also worship. Those who refuse to worship him will be persecuted and many will be killed. But those who submit to him and take his mark will face eternal punishment from God. Revelation 14 verses 9 and 10 gives us a stark warning. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Brothers and sisters, the world is moving rapidly toward this reality, and many are blind to it. We are sleepwalking into a time where the Antichrist will have global power and the systems of control are being built right before our eyes. As Christians, we must not be deceived. We must recognize the times we are living in and be prepared. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 6, So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. The world we live in is more connected than ever before. The Bible is clear about what is coming and we must be prepared. Let me be clear, this is not a time for fear, but for faith. While the world is sleepwalking into the hands of the Antichrist, we as believers must remain vigilant and faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ. We know how the story ends. The Antichrist may rise to power, but he will ultimately be defeated by the return of Jesus Christ. Revelation 19.20 tells us that the beast and the false prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire. Our hope is not in the systems of this world, but in the eternal kingdom of God. We are living in a time of unprecedented change. Globalization, technology, and surveillance are creating a world that is rapidly moving toward the fulfillment of Revelation 13. The systems of control that the Antichrist will use are already being put in place, and the world is willingly embracing them. But we, as followers of Christ, must not be deceived. We must be awake, alert, and prepared for what is coming. The Bible tells us that these things must happen, but it also tells us that Jesus Christ will ultimately triumph. Let us fix our eyes on him, the author and finisher of our faith, and stand firm in the truth of his word.